morning. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I apologize for being a few minutes late today. Uh, honestly, I was struggling with uh, some thoughts that are going on in my mind and uh, kind of where we're at today. Uh, my son, as many of you are probably also struggling with, is this uh, isolation, uh, being apart from friends, uh, the desire to want to be together but not. Um, I know he shares it, I share it, uh, many of you do as well. Uh, right now we are in a, a time of social isolation. Uh, to be honest, I never, if, if you ever would have asked me if I would ever think we'd be in a spot like this, I would obviously said no. Uh, as Christians, we recognize God made us to be community people. Uh, he established Adam and Eve to be in union with each other. And he called and established his people through tribes that they would be always live in community. They would show themselves in their community to be unique and different from the rest of the world. As I was going through the reading for this next Sunday, uh, doing my preparation for our Bible study today at 1030, you can join us on that by Zoom. Uh, just follow the links and the emails that went out, uh, but also in thinking about the the purpose of the sermons that, uh, that I've been looking at for the next few weeks, we've been doing a journey through the book of Acts. And Acts is one of those that reminds us that God has brought us together by the Holy Spirit to be in unity with each other, not to be isolated. Uh, one of the things I saw from a, a friend of mine is that now the church has been deployed. Well, there's some truth to that. But when you read the book of Acts, you see that the desire is always to come together, to bring groups together, to encourage, support, to challenge, to to spur one another on within changing times, times that are, uh, well, as Peter will describe, sufferings. Now, we aren't meant to just be in a church or be just together, but we're supposed to be out loving and serving and, and witnessing to the community. However, we're in a time now where we're going to two extremes. Maybe some of us were used to just being in church and doing activities in church. And now we're closed to our homes or doing our own jobs, but no longer able to join as people of faith. I've received many thankfulness that uh, I'm doing these online devotions each day, and it's my joy to do them. Um, but I want to encourage us that these devotions are what we're trying to do to, to kind of make it through these days, um, longing for the opportunity to come back together, to join together as God's people, because that's what God is created us, designed us to be people in community, people who love each other, people who are our family. I never would have thought anything in our state or in our federal government targeting churches and saying that we are not essential or telling us that we can only be around our family members or those who, uh, who are relying upon us for necessity, which in many ways goes against what the church is and what we were created to be. So today I want to share with you a little devotion out of uh, Acts chapters 1 and 2 as examples of what we're to be. And then Peter's words from, these are the epistle and the first reading for this next Sunday. And a reminder to us how we are called to be a family, a body of Christ. And that when these sufferings come, it's not to encourage us to be separate and isolated, but more so to bear on these sufferings as witnesses to who our God is. So let's just begin with Matthew or with Acts chapter 1, verses 12 to 14. Now to give you the context here, Jesus had taken his disciples up to the to the mountain. He ascended. You'll hear about that more tonight with uh, with Uncle Chris in our worship at home. And then they go and they wait in Jerusalem for the promise that they were going to be given by Jesus. And it begins in this way. Then they return to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. Now all these had with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. 
Now, this is part of a, a lectionary where we jump into the re uh, or choosing of Matthias to take the place of Judas, which is a, a big uh, message in Acts that they were seeking to fulfill God's word spoken through the Old Testament to get back to their number of 12. But a, a key here is that Luke records the the names of these 11 as they were gathered along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and of his brothers, because he wants to know that they were in community. And what do they do in community? They were all of one mind and they devoted themselves to prayer. That's what God's people do. They come together when there's times of uncertainty, times of fear, and they come together in one mind and they join in prayer. That is something that we, we've neglected to do, I think, in some ways, because of our social isolation, because of the mandates from our government. And I think too often, even we as Christians think, well, I can pray at home, or, you know, I can watch the devotions at home. But when we are at home, or when we are by ourselves, or even just with our family members, we aren't being challenged by God's Word. We're reading the parts of God's Word we like. We're reaffirming what we think that we want or need to hear. It's when we are with others going through a time of crisis that we find encouragement and hope and strength. And so here you have the 11 gathered again in that upper room. And they were what? They were of one mind and they were praying. We'll jump forward to Acts 2. After the gift of the Spirit comes, Peter gives this tremendous and powerful sermon about who Jesus is and what happened to him, all according to God's plan. And at the end of this, we hear that all those who heard repented and said, brothers, what should we do? And, you, and Peter says, then repent and be baptized every one of you for the forgiveness of your sins. And you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And his promise is for you and for your children, again, the community that God creates by his spirit. So what did that, what did that fellowship look like? Well, they didn't go back to their own homes and kind of live in their own ways. No, they continue gathering together because that's what the Spirit does. It calls, gathers, and enlightens the whole Christian church on earth. You see, the power of God's Spirit at work, as we see through the whole book of Acts, is gathering people together. Acts 2, 42 to 47 says this, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, and to the fellowship, and to the breaking of bread and prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all, as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Again, you have this community who celebrates and focuses upon God's word. They have one mind and they devote themselves to prayer. And it doesn't only happen when they are together in the temple. It continues into their homes as they gather together in their homes. And their witness through their gatherings is what reveals to the rest of the world whose they are and how they follow their Lord. They distribute to anyone as they have need. They care for the, the hurting, the lonely, and they bring them into a community. Both these passages and acts have been resonating in my mind because this is what the Lord has called us to be, a community of Galilee, to gather together in a place where people will witness and know who we are and whose we are, and that we might have all our things in common. We might devote ourselves to the apostles' teachings, to the fellowship, to the Lord's Supper, and to prayers. Yeah, this social isolation, uh, as we are honoring and respecting our governing authorities, as we honor and respect those in our, who are medical professionals, who may give us a lot of information, but the way we respond to that says a lot about the God who loves us, who's redeemed us, and who leads us. We are people of community. We need to be people of community, and we need to witness our faith in that community. That's why I tell you each day that I long for us to get back together, because this is not how God has desired us to live. 
in isolation, fearing for our own lives, for the lives of our family, but looking at being a Christian as a way of, of persevering, of rejoicing even when sufferings come. So when we're faced with events like right now, I would always wonder, you know, is this, you know, social isolation, staying home, defining what is, ne what is necessary? I think, you know, this is something that the deceiver has worked in our hearts and minds due to the media, due to doctors and nurses, due to all those other gods we place our trust in. And he's caused us to see that we aren't needing to be community, that we can go about this on our own. And that's why the last reading I want to share with you is from 1 Peter chapter 5. Now, it's a, a letter to me as a pastor or to us who are leaders in the church, but it's a reminder of who we are to be together and why. So Peter writes, So I exhort you, the elders among you, as a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as a partaker in the glory that is going to be revealed, shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with the humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so the proper time he may exalt you, casting all of your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you had suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. This passage, as Peter's been weaving throughout this epistle, is writing to people who are facing death, who are facing persecution. And his encouragement here is to realize that we're not alone in this. We shouldn't be isolating ourselves, but being together to, to encourage one another. And that those who are leaders in the church, like me, and like many in our own congregation, like many in our district, we should lead God's flock, not a bunch of individuals as separated, but together. Not over under compulsion, not seeking shameful gain, but doing all these things realizing that we are the ones who are serving the chief shepherd and that he will re he will give to us a crown of glory. You know, this last week I went to an SED conference uh, virtually via Zoom. And I was one of the youngest ones in, in that conference and my smaller group of a number of individuals, we were talking about how to respond and what we're doing and as as pastors. And a concern that came up was that the people that were in my group who were over 60, who felt like they were in the group of, uh, of those who were more um, uh, compromised due to COVID, they were talking about not holding services, not holding communion or providing communion out of fear for their own lives and their own health. And I'm not trying to speak down on any of my brothers here, but I, as my wife and I continue to talk each day, and I cherish the gift of my wife in my life, we have been called by God to live in community, to, to be an under shepherd of Christ. And no matter where we go, as I shared yesterday, no matter what we are faced or confronted with, we are not to think of ourselves. We are to think of others. We are to think of the flock and the care of the flock. We are to think of those in our community and the care of the community. This idea that we can remain separate and still be the church, well, there's some truth to that, but the, I'll just say, <laughs> the devil is prowling around 
and he is roaring and we're listening to his roars and we're believing them. We're forgetting the fact that our God is a God over the living and the dead, that our God is the one who calls and gathers and enlightens through his spirit, that our God is the one who empowers us in our witness and ministry together. I'm not saying this to at all have guilt on any, on any of you, but to realize that when that day comes that we can come back together, we will do so in a safe fashion and that we will do so in a way that is able to encourage each other. But more so, it's gonna be in a witness of who our God is that we are not afraid, that we know that the, the devil of this world, that he's out trying to destroy us, to pull us apart, to, to tear us down, and to get us to focus on ourselves and our own needs, forgetting that we have a God who provides for all of them. And so, as you see, my theme is often, you know, not fearing in this time, realizing that fear is a result of the devil's casting anxieties upon us, fears upon us, and yet, as we have here in verse verses six and seven, no matter what we face, no matter what fiery trials and struggles that come upon us, our encouragement is to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God so that he may at the proper time exalt you. Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be sober-minded. Don't, don't give in to all the whims and all the fear and all the trepidation all the highs and lows that you see around you because your adversary, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion seeking someone to, be, to devour. So resist him, firming your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you've suffered, the God of all grace, who has called you, his chosen beloved ones, to his eternal glory in Christ, he will restore you, confirm you, strengthen you, and establish you. Know that this separation, this exile that we have is not going to be much longer and that we will be gathered back together. And that God of all grace, who has called us to be his own, he will restore, confirm, and strengthen, and establish us. Long for that day. Don't embrace this captivity right now, this, this Babylonian exile but long for the day that we can join back together for not just for ourselves at all, but for our witness to our community. The closing prayer I'd like to share is from the litany. I love this prayer because it reminds us, it focuses our attention not on what I want or what I need or the health or needs of, of me or my family, which let's be honest, sometimes our prayers can get so focused on that, but it focuses on the needs of Christ's church, of Christ's community, of Christ's people, and of the world. And so I'm going to go ahead and read these from page 288 and page 289 and close the Lord's Prayer. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, hear us. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, the Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us. Spare us, good Lord. Be gracious to us. Help us, good Lord. From all sin, from all error, from all evil, from the crafts and the assaults of the devil, from sudden and evil death, from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and from rebellion, from lightning and tempest, and from all a calamity by fire and water, from everlasting death, good Lord, Deliver us by the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and your bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit. Help us, good Lord. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment, help us, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, O Lord, to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, 
to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. We implore you to hear us, good Lord, to raise those who fall and strengthen those who stand, and to comfort and help the weak-hearted and the distressed. We implore you to hear us, good Lord, to give all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all who are in authority, to protect our magistrates and all our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows, to provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage and have mercy on us all. We implore you to hear us, good Lord, to forgive our enemies, persecutors and slanderers, and to turn their hearts to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth and graciously hear our prayers. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O oh Lord, have mercy. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I gotta say, today is a little bit of a colder day out here. I'm chilly and I'm maybe speaking faster because I want to get inside. I'm on my, my uh, picnic table here instead of my normal sitting place. Uh, but boy, right now, I guess I can say I feel like I'm wanting to have a hug uh, to help warm up, uh, getting back to the fact that God's bringing us together so we might be able to give each other warmth, give each other comfort, encouragement, uh, give hugs and high fives. I so long for that not out of some personal desire for myself, but to know that that is how God has created us. He has established us to be a community. As we gather together, we will celebrate the Lord's Supper. We will share in singing of psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, and we will point all others to the one who has brought us through the sufferings, that we have not succumbed to the wiles of the devil, but we have stood firm in our faith because we know that we're not alone in what we're suffering, but that we have others around the world that are going through the same. And we have the same Lord and same shepherd who is over us all. May the God of our Father in heaven, may Jesus Christ descend by the Holy Spirit, bless your day today and every day in his love, in his life, and in his joy. Don't forget our worship at home tonight. Have your hymnals with you on page 260 as uh, myself and uh, Uncle Chris are able to share. And as we're also looking, we're looking for encouragement from others. If you would like to read one of the, the lessons of these next coming weeks or read one of the catechism pieces, please send, drop me an email. And uh, as I plan these services, I can look forward to including you as well. Let me know if you'd like to be a reader. And all you have to do is video yourself and send, and, uh, send it to me or uh, we'll use our church Dropbox account. Talk to you soon. Have a very blessed day. I love you and aloha.